Hi, I'm Laurie Alred. Welcome to Inspired by Pinterest, where I browse around Pinterest looking for amazing pins and craft ideas from crafters and people like you from around the world bring it and bring them to life each week on an episode here on my craft channel. Today we're going to be talking about drop cloth projects. Now, drop cloths meaning the paint drop cloths. You can pick them up at any hardware store. Your local Walmart has them in their paint section. They're amazing. Now, this one right here is a 9 by 12. It's pretty hefty and pretty big. Now, the trick to using drop cloths on any repurposed project is you have to wash it and not just once. I'm talking about two or three times. So the reason being is they coat it with some kind of chemical um, to make it so that the paint doesn't go through the drop cloth when you're using it. And of course we want it to be soft and a little bit more pliable and nice to the touch. So I just threw it in my washer a couple times and then maybe about the third time I threw in some towels so I wasn't completely just only washing that. But I will tell you this goes a long ways. You can do a lot with a nine by 12. They range anywhere from 23, $24 down to 20. I think I picked up the most inexpensive one at Walmart and I've tried the Lowe's, Home Depot and Walmart. They're all pretty much the same. So it doesn't matter in quality. Okay, so let's start off. I do have a pin board called Drop Cloths and Projects and you can see some amazing fun ideas in there. And as always, you can go to allreddesign.net to get direct links to anything I mentioned here on the show. So the first pin I want to feature is called from shineyourlightblog.com and she shows these beautiful curtains that she made out of drop cloths. And who would have thought? I went recently to the Heber House Retreat House and all her curtains were done with drop cloths. They were beautiful. She even had a Victorian couch covered in drop cloth. Loved it, it was amazing. So I thought that was really fun how she did this stencil on here. And I even really liked one from tinysidekick.com. She did outdoor curtains, wouldn't these be perfect? Very inexpensive, if they get ruined by weather, you're not gonna be heartbroken, but I loved how simple she made it. You don't need a really intricate stencil. You can tape some stripes, paint it with acrylic paint or even house paint, and it would work great, and a roller brush. So the next um, pin that I loved was from paintedtherapy.blogspot.com. She made adorable, cute, ruffled valances in her kitchen, on her back door. Really clever. Be sure to check out her blog. And then let's take it from curtains and hanging to down to the floor. These make great rugs. So there's a really fun pin I am going to feature from Lowe's.com and they did this fun, fun outdoor striped drop cloth. So not only does it help to you know pick up paint but it takes paint really well as well but my favorite pin that i'm going to feature this one tops them all for me it's from tried and true blog.com she made this adorable picnic blanket out of a drop cloth and then to top it off not only did she stencil cute bicycles all over it but the next pin is showing you this cute handle she made so when you fold it up you can just strap it together and then carry it so cute i'm so gonna knock this one off and then last, I mentioned furniture. Here's a fun one from blueroofcabin.com and she recovered a chair and drop cloth. And then the last pin from aka-design.ca is just some cute pillows. And you can do, I'm gonna show you some fun tips and tricks for stenciling on drop cloths today here on my craft channel. So as you can see, I have a bunch of ideas. So these, cut these up to the size that you want for whatever project, runners, tablecloths, whatnot. But the one thing I found I absolutely love rather than trying to use vinyl or a plastic stencil was using freezer paper and you know we've all heard it use freezer paper as a stencil on t-shirts it really does work I was so excited how much fun it was now I'm going to give you some tips I do run this through my electronic cutter um, this one I ran through the silhouette you do have to lighten the the pressure on the machine and run it real slow this is very thin I put it on the copy paper setting but even then when I have too intricate of a cut you'll see it mutilated my spider right here so it did get October really nice though so it's kind of hit or miss sometimes and the other thing is it doesn't stick really good to the mat um, mainly a tip is I'm the iron on part that sticks is the shiny side the problem is, is the shiny side doesn't stick really good to the mat so if you want it to stick better flip it over cut it in reverse that should solve your problem. And I just thought of that. So here's some really fun things I did with using my freezer paper. So I thought it'd be fun to make some pillows to go on a little bench I have. 
and um, for the different seasons. So I made an October 31, and then I did a December 25, and then I'm going to do a February 14th and March 17th, and so on. You can have a lot of fun with this. So I just cut those out, and then I ironed it on the freezer paper, and I didn't want any. Oh, the other thing I learned, spray paint works awesome. So I wanted to make sure I covered my whole pillow front. So I even took strips and ironed it on to cover this side. It peels right off. Oh, and that's washi tape to cover that little bit of extra. Because, hello, I have a lot of washi tape. So, just pull it off. Look how beautiful that is and how fun that is. And it's not stiff. I, I really like the way that spray paint works on this. So, here's my two pillows I just need to put together and put in a form. And then with my leftover, this is the other thing. With my negative, I pulled off of the stencil. I thought, I'm going to make a banner. So, I did a 2-5. And I ironed those babies on because I hate to waste them. Look how beautiful that turned out. My husband was shaking his head. You're spray painting fabric now. So, of course, I'm looking for inexpensive ways to craft. And what better way to do that? Look how beautiful that turns out. And then I did a, the 31. I'm going to put it in a short banner, cut them into a cute point at the end, add some orange ribbon to it. It'll be really cute. Fun way to repurpose that. And just to show you how simple it is, I started this spider. I'm going to do a long pillow that says Itsy Bitsy Spider. And so for the spider, I wanted it to be glittery. So this is a simple trick. Uh, you can use a heat set iron on, or you can create your own with a stencil. So all I did for this stencil, or for the glitter part, is I took my black paint, and while I, the paint is wet, is when I poured the glitter on. So it works really simple. I just didn't want to do, as you can see, spray paint worked really good for a large surface area. This is just a quick, easy way to use your acrylic paint. A trick that I will definitely recommend, take your old Cricut or Silhouette mats that you don't use anymore, don't throw them away. I love using them under a surface. Um, this paint does go through, because remember we washed the drop cloth and got rid of that coating. So it will soak through to the other side. So I put that underneath so it soaks onto my mat instead of the other back side of my pillow. And then we're just going to sprinkle with this sugar coating from Doodlebug that I love. It's their fine coat glitter. And then it's as simple as... Now, even the, I even repurposed the clear part of my Cricut mats. So I'll put that aside and clean that up later. And then this peels right off. You can wait till it dries or take it off wet. I haven't noticed that it changed the outcome any. And I'm a messy crafter, so. Then we've got this middle section here. And then we've got this little itty bitty section here. This is the part I probably should let dry so I don't peel off the paint. There we go. I was just trying to find an edge. So look how great that turned out. Oh, we still have the middle of the D. Look how fun that is. With spider, it's gonna be really cute. And then I bought some fun heat set. I know Silhouette and Silver. Silhouette makes this. I picked it up at a local place called Regional Supply. Cut it out on my silhouette and then you just take a hot iron. Now I had some trouble using heat set in the past but it's super easy. I don't even put a cloth over it but you just want to apply enough pressure and let that heat up. I have it on the highest heat with no steam. Put it over the design. Now this is their glitter heat set which I love. I have so much fun cutting this out and making stuff with it. You'll see the pillow over my shoulder. I'm going to show you in another episode how to recreate that. So I don't think you can tell the difference between my glitter side and my heat set. So that's going to be a darling pillow. Hopefully I'll finish it and feature it on my blog at allreddesign.net. Thanks for joining me and hopefully I've inspired you to look at drop costs in a whole new way.